It's right, we've got the grid there. It's Glenn Seaton on the front row of the grid, Dick Johnson second, uh, John Bow from Russell Engel. Don't forget these are the positions in the first race. The finishing order of the first race, indeed they are. Peter Brock, Larry Perkins sharing row three, Alan Jones and Terry Finnegan. That was an outstanding effort. They share the next row. Tony Longhurst from John Faulkner, six row of the grid, Wayne Gardner. Great drive from Mark Skate. Race one wasn't too bad for Stephen Richards either. 18th up to 13th. He shares the seventh row with Mark Larkham. Good work by young Darren Hossack. He shares row eight with Trevor Ashby. Ninth row of the grid is Bob Pearson and Greg Crick, uh, who had a coming together with uh, Mark Larkham. Tenth row of the grid is Kevin Heffernan and John Cotter. We go back row 11, Neil Shevery, Wayne Russell, Mike Conway and Richard Mork, row 12. Row 13, poor old Greg Murphy who had a uh, drive chain problem. Probably an appropriate row number as well. We get ourselves ready for race number two. Could it possibly be better than the first race? Set to go. Watch the lights in the top right hand side. We are away. Watch Russell Ingle in the middle. Does he get away to a good start? He's coming right up through the middle. Seaton got away to a beauty. It's going to be pretty tight in the first quarter, but Seaton works it through. Now oh. got away to a great start as well. This is on board with Murphy. You can hear it. You know it's Murphy because you can hear the squealing brakes. He's trying to weave his way through past Pierce and past oh, Larkham. Look at him go. Murphy is on fire. Right around the whole lot of them. He's up beside Stevie Richards now in the Valvoline Cummins machine. And looking for a way past. He's got to come all the way back from row 13. And it's definitely an angry Greg Murphy. Poor guy, you know, gets such bad luck. Well, this is great pictures from the windscreens, O'Brien. Well, this is not in car, this is on car camera. Out the front, up behind Terry Finnegan. Boy, oh boy, Murphy has made up some places. There's Longhurst just up behind, in front of him, rather. As we go out, it's Seaton, Bow. Then we go back to Russell Ingle, Dick Johnson and Alan Jones. Yeah, poor old Jones, he wasn't uh, too happy with his situation in the first one. So, uh, the second one, I don't think he's going to be any better off. Well, John Bow now, he's got a good shot at our current championship points leader. We'll see how he goes, there's plenty of time left to run. Working it around the field is uh, nice and smooth through that section. We go on board the Shell Helix Falcon with Dick Johnson. He is up behind Russell Ingle. Hey, it's so good to see old DJ. Uh, things coming together for him. He hasn't had the best of seasons so far. In fact, I've got an inkling it might not be uh, Russell. It might in fact be Larry. I haven't had a chance to look at the windscreen to see if the yellow blade tapes across. It is in fact Larry Perkins. So it is Larry who's sitting up there ahead of Dick Johnson. It's Ingle further back, so Russell didn't get as good a start as what I thought he did. Dick's going quite well, though. A second in the first one. Let's see how he goes here. Hard on the brakes. Trying to have a look up the inside of Larry Perkins. Jones is hot on his hammer. Then we go back to Russell Ingle. Working it round. Johnson trying to stay up with those couple in front. Trying to get up with Perkins. Perkins trying to get up with Bow. There's your Shell Helix race score for you. Now, the interesting thing is that, uh, don't forget, uh, Seaton is on Bridgestones, as is Jones. They're using the same tyres, yet um, Jones's tyres deteriorated so badly, as we could all see from the second lap in, yet uh, Glenn Seaton's tyres were, well, not like brand new, but still in really good nick at the end of uh, the first race. Yeah, they held up very well. AJ was doing it extremely tough. There's our high camera angle. It's a beauty going down into turn nine. You can see John Bowers certainly closed that gap right up on Glenn Seaton. Bow won the first race of three here last year. It was the opening round of the 96 championship. He had a good run here. In fact, he finished third overall in the points here in 96. He's running third in this year's championship at the moment. We go on board with Greg Murphy. He's right up behind the Coca-Cola machine of Wayne Gardner. And you can see Mark Scaife just a little bit in front of Wayne. Poor old Murphy's uh, really got to work hard at this, you know. He's got absolutely nothing to lose, you know. He's come right from the back of the grid. No points in the first heat, so, you know, he can go all out. Well, Barry, a good point there. He's come right from the back of the grid into 10th position. That's a great job. Fantastic pictures from the windscreens O'Brien camera here. Yeah, his lap time isn't so quick as Seaton's uh, second and a half quicker. But the reason for that is, is because Murphy is going through traffic like Piccadilly Circus on a Saturday morning. <laughs> He's going very well. Out the back of Way uh, uh, Mark Scaife's car, looking back at Wayne Gardner. You can see just how fast this circuit is, an average speed of 157 kilometres an hour. It's a very fast, free-flowing circuit, like you hear, heard Neil Crompton mention in the first race. 
by no means a stop go circuit it's very fast very flowing I'm just trying to get a look through the back of Gardner's guy. You see, Murphy's definitely on it, locking up uh, the inside front there. Well, Greg sits fifth in the championship before the first race coming into this round. So he needs to get some valuable points. We go on board with Murphy now. Having a look at the inside of the oh, coach Commodore. I think he gave him a little nudge there. I'm not quite sure. Got very, very close. He went straight up the inside, though. There is no stopping this young Kiwi. Now he's got Mark Scape on his list, so he's moved up inside the top ten. He's up in the ninth now. Look Scape at, is sitting in eighth. You look, he's making up hand over fist on Scape, because don't forget, uh, Murphy's using tyres that haven't done the first heat, so therefore um, there's no doubt that he's going to be in better nick than uh, everybody else in the race. Before too much longer, he's going to be up with his teammate as well. You can see there in the background, John Faulkner's got himself ahead of uh, Terry Finnegan and also Tony Longhurst, so Faulkner's on a bit of a charge also. Be interesting to see Greg's lap time now. He just put in a 1.33.2, so still not the quickest, but he's going very well. Oh, Gardner running really wide there. Pictures out of the back of Mark Scase. Gibson Motorsport Commodore. Scape went exceptionally well. We were all riding with him in that first race when he had to come in for the stop go penalty oh, and work his up. way up into 12th. <laughs> Here comes Murphy though. Have a look at him go. Listening to Mark Scape's car, hard at work. Now if Brett gets a good run out of this, gets right, we're going backwards up the hill now. Into the left hander. Right now, no, not quite close, so I thought he might be able to get up the inside, but... Out the front of Greg Murphy's car, he has the outside option here on Scape, he's going to bring it back in tight, as he does, coming out of turn nine, good close shot there of Murphy, he's all over the back of Scape now. This is going to get interesting because they're not very far behind Brock, Ingle and Jones either. Now, when we watch coming out of this, the, the three left-handers onto the start and finish straight, you see if uh, Murphy should be in good shape, gets out of this, he won't get as much, uh, lose as much traction out of that. I reckon he'll be past going into the left-hander. Well, he's got a good draft on Mark Scape coming down the main straight. Let's see if he's going to be able to pull it off. He pulls to the inside, out of the draft. Scape says, no way, buddy, you're not getting up there. No Through way, the Jose. first corner they go. Yeah, no way, Jose. He's oh, oh. Bit right on the inside there, you saw him break loose. Front, front, left, went onto the grass. The back end stepped out just a little. He hasn't been able to get past Mark Scape. Yeah. Scape's doing a great job. Yeah, he's doing a great job. I was just going to say, it's definitely going to slow the Murph's uh, progress up because Scape is, is hot stuff on the, on the worst of days. And uh, to get past him, it's not going to be easy. Well, you can see there your positions on your Shell Helix race score. It's still Seaton, Val, Perkins, Johnson and Jones. They are your top oh, ten. Five of his match. Beautiful move there by Greg Murphy on the inside. It doesn't come much closer than that. Gardner, that's given Gardner a bit of incentive as well. He's come back up on Mark Scape. We ride with Scape now in the Australian 1000 Classic car. He's going to try and mount a comeback on Greg Murphy, but he's going to be pretty hard-pressed, I'd imagine. Murphy is really going very well here at the moment, and he's having a look at Peter Brock, his teammate. I don't, I don't think uh, they've got a hope in hell's chance of staying with Murphy because you saw how quick Murphy called up, plus the fact Murphy's tyres, plus the fact the Yokohamas that Scaife and uh, Gardner are on um, are definitely not the flavour of the day. Oh, he's got Jones! Nice one. That's good. And that's Jonesy just struggling for grip again, you know, pushing the front and uh, leaving the door. Oh, Jonesy heading for the pit. He has some problems. I was about to say that, Barry, because only a moment ago I said he was looking at his teammate. Brock got past Jones, quick smart, and then Murphy went straight past him as well. So poor old AJ's got some problems. Yeah, I think they're round and black and cool tyres yeah. at the moment. <laughs> You're watching race two, round six. The 97 Shell Australian Touring Car Championships. Placings haven't changed. It's still Seaton, Bow, Perkins, Johnson and Ingle, your top five. Brock and Murphy, fifth and sixth. Scape's got his way up there. So too Gardner and Faulkner. That's your top ten. Longhurst just a little bit out of it, sitting back in 11th position at the moment. Our high camera angle. The top end of the circuit as they come onto the main straight. Dick Johnson having a look there at Larry Perkins again trying to get past him every time all the while while they're battling it out up comes russell engel and peter brock you can see greg murphy just one car further back and we've got four laps left to run peter brock too he's got a little bit of an extra wriggle on sitting there with russell 
Rock finished in the top five in the first race, finished in fifth. He's been running quite consistently, had a good round at Winton. Two thirds and a ninth, just a little bit off the pace in that last one. Here's the uh, windscreens O'Brien profile for Dick Johnson. Winner of Bathurst, of course, three times, five times. Winner of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. And here's his progress this year. Didn't get off to a great start at Calder. Couple of consistent rounds at Phillip Island and Sandown, and also at Winton. Not so good at Simmons Plains, but at the moment he sits eighth in the championship in his Shell Helix Falcon. The order hasn't changed. What have we got left in the last three laps? Well, it looks like, I was just watching the speed of uh, Johnson's car as against Perkins' car. Doesn't seem an awful lot in it. and. Uh, to me, it seems as if Perkins is kind of controlling it because Dick was right up his backside and he pulled out a little. But uh, having said that, I would have thought if he was, he would have been pulling further away. Keep your eyes on Murphy. Too bad he's oh. starting to come right up. We have a look now. This is the windscreens O'Brien camera out the front of Greg Murphy's car. He is looking at the rear of his teammate there. You've got to be careful with a governor. You can't. You, you can touch anybody, but don't touch the governor. <laughs> This should be a couple of uh, exciting last couple of laps. He has a look at the inside of Peter Brock there. Ingalls, the next car up, then Johnson, then Perkins. So Murphy has done an incredible job to work his way through the field up to seventh. It's a fantastic effort. I think that first half a lap going into the hairpin, he must have nailed six or seven guys there. Yeah, he was on fire right from the outset. Now Murphy just needs, he wants to get up past Brock, get up as high as he possibly can. Time's running out though. Johnson has a look up the inside of Perkins. Couldn't quite do it into turn nine. They are closer than they've ever been throughout the race. Have a look at them. Five of them bunched up beautifully. Right, now watch DJ through this, um, through the three left-handers onto the start and finish. If, uh, if he can manage to get right up. Oh, yes! If he stays right behind Perkins, there's an outside chance he'll be able to get a slipstream and just nip out into the fast left-hander. Peter Brock just got a bit of a better run out of that uh, last turn onto the main straight, but here comes Murphy. They've just crossed the start-finish line. We have two laps remaining in race two. You're riding with Greg Murphy. This is the windscreens O'Brien camera at the front of Murphy's HRT Commodore. We go on board now with Johnson. He has got a, uh, looks a bit of crap oh. windscreen there. May have copped a stone or something in the windscreen, but it has certainly cracked pretty badly. It definitely wasn't there before, Barry. No, it wasn't. I'm just, uh, just intrigued to see where uh, Dick makes up the ground on Larry and uh, where the possibility of having a go. But when you get a campaigner like Larry Perkins, you can keep everything covered. It's. Uh, it's a really hard job. Well, Larry Perkins himself is sitting fourth in the championship coming into this round. And keep in mind, too, that there's still 22 points floating around in the air under his appeal. After uh, the round at Sandown when he hit Peter Brock, his appeal hasn't been heard. So if they do grant him his 22 points back, he is not out of this championship by a long shot as Brock has a look up the inside of Ingle. Murphy staying in touch as well. This is going to be a tremendous last lap. You see how evenly matched now the Holdens and the Fords are. They don't need to do anything to them, do they? You know, it's uh, all the uh, business about the aerodynamic uh, forces being in favour of Holden or Ford or whatever. They're fine as they are. Well, the... Uh, oh, good slipstream here. Look, slipstream. Out the slipstream. Greg yes. Murphy pulls upside his teammate Peter Brock. Is he going to get no. it? No, he doesn't. <laughs> Brocky hangs on. So, Peter Brock being determined there, and he won't relinquish that sixth position. He won't give it up to his younger teammate. Positions remain still as is. It's Seaton and Bow right up the front. Then Perkins, Johnson, Ingle, Brock and Murphy. That's this battle we're watching now. We've stayed with this for quite some time. Scape and Gardner are still battling it out as well, and Faulkner is still in the top ten. What's going to happen? Will anyone make a move? Murphy tried to unrock, but he couldn't quite get there. The difficult thing in a situation like this, you could be so intent on getting in front of the guy uh, that's in front of you, uh, and in the meantime, the guy that's behind you can take advantage of it and nip up the inside, so you have to yeah, you have to keep both ends covered. Here is our race leader, our winner from race one, our championship points leader. And ironically, or coincidentally, the last guy to win here a round of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship in a Ford 
was Glenn Seaton in 1993, the year that he won the championship. So it's looking that way. Have a look at our high camera shot there. It illustrates the point beautifully of the gap between first and second and second back to third. Poor old John Bowers had a really lonely race. Hasn't he? He's been all by himself, so too Glenn Seaton, but I'm sure he's not too worried about that because he is coming home to take out race two. Two starts, two wins today. Glenn Seaton in the Ford Credit Falcon does it again. Could this be another sand down where he took the clean sweep? He's very happy with himself. The team was extremely happy after qualifying when he grabbed his sixth pole position of his career, of his Shell Australian Touring Car Championship career. And there he is. He has taken two wins today already. And we're going to do it one more time. And he's got the clean sweep for the second time this season. Good on you, Glenn Seaton. A great run. He hasn't really been challenged. And that's becoming a characteristic of the baby-faced assassin. Looking down our camera that's mounted inside the Ford Credit Falcon and giving the thumbs up. So he works exceptionally hard. And I was talking to him this morning before the race and uh, he said never discount Russell Engle he's only 20 points behind we go on board with Dick Johnson he had a hard race he had a hard race but he's bound to be he's got to be happy with it you know at last things seem to have turned round a bit and uh, I saw to John Bow apparently they still have problems in mid corner uh, with the car under steering that is they turn into the corner get in the middle of the corner and then the, the front starts to push and they don't know what it is well, John Faulkner in the Better Electrical Commodore, he finished in 10th position. So a great effort for him, top privateer and a top 10 finish ahead of Tony Longhurst. So John will be happy with that. Not as good as uh, previous rounds. However, still a good result. And uh, coming into this round, he was running ninth in the championship. So it's been the best year for John Faulkner. Here's the final placings for you on the Shell Helix race score. Glenn Seaton, John Bow, Larry Perkins, Nick Johnson and Russell Ingle in for fifth position. Sixth position is Peter Brock from Greg Murphy, from Mark Scape, Wayne Gardner and John Faulkner. Two races down, we have got one more to go. There's 11th back through 15th.